I've drawn it so the top of the cylinder is cut off by the plane Z equals 5. So what we want then is the volume that lies inside the cylinder below the, 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 the top, which is in the plane Z equals 5, and above the paraboloid. So the paraboloid will come in and intersect with that sphere. Uh, sorry, the, the paraboloid will come in and intersect with this cylinder to form some sort of circle. So you've got, essentially, if I want to draw this a different way, I would draw it like this, just without the axes. You'll have Okay, it's probably not a very good picture, but you've got sort of a cylinder coming down and then a curved bottom rather than a flat bottom. Okay, you've got a curved bottom at the bottom of the cylinder rather than a flat bottom. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, essentially it's just, we know double integrals are given, uh, can give us volume of solids. So with this one, we've got two functions um, that are sort of, being connected here. Now, the, the, you can see the base essentially lies above a disk. So if I wanted to look at what's known as the projection of this solid, omega, in the xy plane, it would be a disk with center at the origin, radius 4. Okay, so think of this green disk and this disk as the same disk. Okay, so how do you calculate the volume? Well, you've got essentially a surface that bounds the, the solid above and a surface that bounds the solid below. So it's just a double integral of, one, of, the, of the top surface minus the bottom surface. Okay? So... Um, if I call this, say, F2 and this F1, now, even though the x's and y's here are like it's just a constant function, you can just think of it as a function of x and y. Okay. So, the volume of omega, let's call this region D here, is the double integral over this region D of f2 of x comma y minus f1 of x comma y. Okay? So you can think of it, remember at school you had to find the area between two curves. It was the integral of the, of the top curve minus the integral of the bottom curve. Yeah, you get it. I can see it in your eyes. Okay? This is, there, there's not, it's the same principle here. You've just gone up one dimension. Okay, so what makes this, 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 in, this integral hard? Well, first of all, this is like a, a discular region, so maybe we'll go to um, polar coordinates, but let's just write it out in terms of Cartesians first. So D, uh, F2 is just a constant function 5. F1 is going to be this. Okay, so that we've still got our integral here in a general form. What we would like to do is, you know, put in our limits of integration and knock it over. So what I'm going to do is describe D in terms of polars and see how that goes. Now, why polars? Why not something else? Well, first of all, this is a, a, a polar type rectangle. And secondly, I've got an x squared plus y squared in the integrand. Okay, and we know that under, under the substitutions, x squared plus y squared in the polar setting will be very simple. Okay? So, if I want to describe my region D in terms of polars, remember polars, polar coordinates involve a length to the origin, R, and an angle, theta, to the positive OX axis. Well, R is going to be between 0 and 4. And 
theta is going to be between 0 and 2 pi because there's one whole revolution there. Now, when we make the substitution, we make the change to polar coordinates, we replace x with r cosine theta, y with r sine theta, and dA with r dr d theta. Okay? We can then put the limits of integration into our integral signs. Okay, so... 5 minus r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta all over 8. And remembering dA gets replaced with r dr d theta. Okay, so now it's just a matter of simplifying things and then trying to knock over the integral. Now don't forget about this factor of r. Lots of students forget that. Okay? It's just multiplying through by the other uh, part of the integrand. Okay, so cos squared plus sine squared equals 1, so I'm going to get um, r squared on the top there. And if I just distribute the r inside, I'm going to get something like this. Okay, so now I've just got it down to a standard double integral, which I can knock over. But there's a quick way of doing this problem, right? Well, a quicker way. What usually happens is you do the inside integral first, and then you move on to the outside integral. But if you look at the integrand, there's no thetas here, and all of these things are constant. So what this means is I can write this as the product of two integrals. So let me show you how that works. You can't always use this, but in simple cases, like this one, where the limits of integration are constant, and you've got a function of r times a function of theta, you can do it. There's no function of, well, the function of theta here is just a constant. So I can write it like this. So that's just, uh, that's nothing, that's 5r here. Okay. okay, so what this means is I can do two integrations in one step. The first integral is just going to be 2 pi, and then it's just multiplying by the second integral. Okay, so this is, this is nothing here. Okay. So, this one's going to give me 2 pi, and this one, well, let's integrate that. So all I need to do now is plug in my r equals 4 and my r equals 0. Obviously, r equals 0 is going to give us 0. So it's just r equals 4, which is the key point. And if I sub those in, I'll get 64 pi. Now, this is a volume question. So I guess we're looking for some sort of units. They're not specified, so... By the u cubed here, I guess I could, I mean units cubed, or cubic units, however you want to say it. Okay, so there's a good analogue there for these kind of questions, whereby you're asked to find the volume between two surfaces. Okay? And it's just a, a standard generalisation from the stuff you learned at school, where you're finding area between two curves.